Today's scripture reading comes from 1 Corinthians 3, 7 through 9. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field. God's building. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey there, I'm Katie. I'm I'm here this morning to introduce Chrissy Heising of Renault, who is the development director at Plant with Purpose, a international development organization here in San Diego but they do work all over the world. Um, What I think is so cool about Plant With Purpose is that they help others to help themselves rather than just giving out money and handouts. So I'm so honored to be able to introduce Christy. Awesome, thanks Katie. I asked her to do that at the very last minute, and I'm surprised she was even able to say my name. <laughs> that rocks. Hosea 10:12. Sow righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplowed ground, for it's time to seek the Lord. Luke 13:6. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but didn't find any. John 15:5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Deuteronomy 22.10, you shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. 2 Timothy 2.6, the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Um, Strange compilation of verses, I know, but they all have one thing in common, which is something that we don't really understand often as Americans. So much of the Bible is written to a culture that's dependent on the land. And I think sometimes we miss it. We miss the meaning of a lot of these types of verses. And this is just a tiny little sampling of the verses in the Bible that refer to agriculture or care of the land. I don't know about you, but I honestly can't think of the last time that I hung out with a sheep or grafted a branch onto a fig tree. It's really not part of my everyday experience. We're so separated from the land in the life that we live. Um, environmental care has kind of become this extra thing that we add onto a moral to-do list and set in a closet over there, or maybe you see yourself as an environmental advocate and so you recycle or you do those day-to-day things, but it's not something that we really integrate into just our core being and at the heart of who we are on a daily basis. What's really interesting to me is that we're just this teeny tiny little blip in history. Um, My grandparents, lived through that, that shift where we went from being a predominantly agricultural society to living in, in places like this and going to an office and um, being so distant from cultivating the land and working the land and everything that we do. Um, so thanks for letting me come up here and talk to you guys today. This is really fun to be able to see all of you. Um, I was invited here to take part in launching the Creation Care Week. Um, So I work for an organization, as Katie mentioned, called Plant With Purpose. We're just down the street based in San Diego, but we work in seven, almost eight countries around the world. Um, What we do is we work with farmers who are kind of stuck in that intersection between environmental degradation and poverty. They're living off the land, rely entirely on the land, but they're working land that nobody wants. It's the land that's maybe a steep hillside or a floodplain or land that doesn't produce what it should because of some environmental degradation. Deforestation is probably the main culprit there. Um, So I'm really excited that you guys set aside a week dedicated to creation care. Um, I've come to realize that in our American lifestyle where we're so disconnected from the physical world around us that our disconnection can really be a handicap, especially in our spiritual lives. We know that all creation shouts loudly about the character of our creator But do we miss some of that? Because we're not farming and we're not digging and we're not out there in in the natural world on a daily basis. 
I've been lucky enough to spend much of the last 10 to 15 years living and working with families all over the world. I spent about five years living in Africa, I spent some time in India, in Latin America, and even in Asia. And for the past eight years, I've been dedicated solely to walking alongside farming families, subsistence agriculture type families, um, mainly in Africa. And I wanna share with you today some of a little bit about what they taught me about how a daily interaction with the land really shapes the way that we see our creator, that we, we understand who God is. So to start, um, I brought a video that Drew did, standing here in the back. Just say hi, thank you for that. Um, from a, a family in Congo, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, in a community called Kigongo. Um, so yeah, can you play the video? My kids need better. I dream of a good life where my kids dress well, have food to eat, live in a good house and go to school. My name is Monica. My husband is Kamuno. We have eight kids. We live in Kalonge in DRC. For a long time I was alone, taking care of the children myself. When I was 12, I was recruited by an armed group we lived a hard life, hiding in the forest. Our life was based on fighting, stealing, and making trouble. I had to live a life that was not my own. It was hard on Monica and the kids. They suffered so much. They didn't eat well. We had one meal a day, and sometimes did not even have that. I heard that my children were sent home from school. They couldn't afford the tuition. Even after they allowed Komunu to come home, we still struggled, but I was happy to see him coming home. We shared and we worked together to settle issues and handle things, but we still did not produce enough. We tried. Some days, our kids could go the whole day only eating cassava leaves. Our kids need better. We dream of a good life. We want them to study, to eat well, to be good farmers so they can reach this better life. One day, a pastor and some environmental technicians came to church and told us about Plant With Purpose. They invited me to come to learn. I was one of the first to join a group. We lived a hard life and had no way to get money when problems came up. We were farming, but not getting sufficient production. We learned about farming, about making rock contours. We learned farming on lines to respect spacing. We learn to use airframes. We plant trees and cultivate existing varieties. We learn how to make compost and vegetable gardens with our wives. We work together. We have to work in order to eat. The pastor told us that God was the first worker. God is the initiator of work. We pray and believe we can succeed because God did so before we were here. God is the model for how we live. After the first year, we saw some areas of our work that needed improvement. We asked for help and did a better job in the second year. It's a new life of learning and working to improve. I took a loan through my group. I got the idea from the small business workshop to go buy some fish at the market by the lake and carry them up to the mountain to sell where they were rare. I made a profit, so I did it again. And slowly, I grew a business. Other people saw what I was gaining and wanted to join Plant With Purpose too. We have seen that to love God, we have to love our neighbors. We know that if we help each other, it means that we are serving the Almighty. We think that if we can change the way we live here, we are serving our God. When Plant With Purpose came, they tried to unite all tribes. They reminded us on how to live in harmony, even with the government. They taught about forgiveness and about faith. Before, we often just felt hopeless. We didn't think about the future. We only thought about that day. We didn't have purpose for our life. After joining, we saw the benefit and thought maybe if we just worked really hard and worked together, we can live a better life. Now we don't have to work like slaves for other people to get money. We work hard on the farm, 
We run side businesses and make our own money. With the new techniques, we get more than we did before. I am easily paying school fees for my children. Now, the kids are eating two to three times per day. When I first heard about Plant With Purpose, I did not actually expect to gain so much. But once I joined, I really started seeing the change happening. First, it's about praying and having faith. That's how you start the process of being changed. God will come. Our farms have been transformed. The land is protected and everyone has better production. I feel proud when I see what my wife has done. I look at her and think, I made a good choice marrying Monica. When I joined, we became one. When I see him doing such great things, I'm really proud of him. He's helping me. Monica in here, she's just a beautiful woman. It was an honor to get to meet her. Um, and there's many, many, many other families just like theirs. But Monica says, we have to work in order to eat. The pastor told us, the pastor that was involved with Plant With Purpose, um, that God was the first worker. God's the initiator of work. We pray and believe that we can succeed because God did so even before we were here. God is the model for how we live. Um, what Monica and Kamino shared with us is that before we came around, before they started learning about agricultural production, they were basically just kind of letting the land go. They would farm sometimes, they'd get up and work sometimes, but really without a lot of knowledge, they didn't produce enough food um, and their kids were hungry. And that's a really sad scenario. That's a scenario, unfortunately, that is shared by the vast majority of the poor people around the world today. In fact, 85% of people living under the poverty line globally are rural, um, mostly farming families rely on the land, even if it's not their predominant source of income, it's a main source of food. Um, so families like Monica and Kamino, they, they really depend on the land. They've discovered that you can't just let the land sit idly by, you have to get up and work. Um, but they've also discovered that you need to care for the land and you need to understand ecology and you need to understand how the environment works together. And one of the things that I've discovered in spending time with people like Monica and Kamno, that no matter how God created the world, what, what strategy, what system, um, anyway, it's really clear that the complexity of the systems, the uh, complexity of the structures, the diversity in ecology and ecosystems, all of these things that we can dive into and under understand more and more and more about how they work, all of this shouts out the glory of the creator that we serve. So we see a few things in Monica and Kamno's life and a few things that farming families understand inherently that I think sometimes it's hard for us to grasp. One is we have a calling. Um, God doesn't just create everything and say, okay, it's good, great. He's called us to join him. Monica and Kamino understand this very clearly because they know that when they're not working the land, when they're not understanding how all of the systems fit together and when you plant these two crops together, the soil is, is nourished and when you build a contour, you stop the soil erosion and the role of reforesting and making sure that you've got a lot of things that, that slow down the water flow and keep the soil lodged so that you don't lose it, um, that these things make their world better, but they also make their livelihood better. Uh, they make it easier to grow lots of food and not just a little bit of food. Um, and so they see that when they get up and they join God and they start to understand what did he make and how does this world work and, and what's my role in it, they see themselves as co-creators is one way that I've heard it described, as people who are, are s fulfilling the calling to join God in, in taking this earth and make it into something beautiful. But at the same time, we see a lot with agriculture. Um, over the years, there's been a trend in agriculture towards let's just produce one crop and let's do it on all of the land everywhere. And if you drive across Nebraska or Iowa or someplace like that, I don't know if you guys have ever had that opportunity, but what you'll see is corn and then corn 
and then corn. And after about 10 hours, you're going to be really sick of corn. Um, and that's kind of what we think of here in the United States as agriculture. Um, over the past few years, there's been a huge trend away from that and back towards a style of agriculture that understands diversity, understands ecosystems and, and how diversity in a system causes that land to, to flourish. So if you're farming just a monocrop, you're going to need lots of fertilizers, pesticides, maybe some hybrid fancy seeds. Not that that's bad, it's just it's really expensive and it requires a lot of interaction and it requires people to kind of keep creating the land. But what we teach is with farmers like Monica and Comno, understand, understand the world that God made. Understand why his creation is so important and how his creation works. Dive into the biology of it and you'll see that when you're living your life every day thinking, wow, this beautiful world that God created, if we just take care of it, and we step into our calling as people to join God in being stewards and caretakers of the land that we're provided for, that we experience abundance in a way that we've never seen before. And I think that that's beautiful. And I think that that might be what we're missing as, as Christians living here in America so distant from the land is how do we sit in that place? And I think it can be really well described as humility understanding that God is in charge, but understanding also that we have a big role to play and that we need to step up and fulfill our role. So I know that you guys aren't going to graduate from Point Loma and go be farmers. It might happen. Maybe one or two of you will, but the vast majority of you will probably do what I do, which is go sit in an office and analyze data or something like that, or maybe you'll be a mus musician or a painter or, or any number of careers. And even here as students, you're probably going to go to the library and study, and I doubt you're going to go farm. But I think that there's something that we can carry about that concept of understanding dependency in the way that, that most of the Bible is written for most people throughout the history of humanity, where we're kind of stuck in dependency on God, needing to, to understand his creation and in his view of what beauty looks like and what, what is good. Let God define that as we move forward and step up. Do your job. Do whatever it is that you're called to do wherever you're placed in this life. Do it with excellence and do it with humility resting on dependence of God. So in 1 Corinthians 3, 6, we, we heard um, Paul say, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one, nor the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor, for we're co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. We have a call to go out and make something. We're co-creators. We're, we're meant to join God in cultivating and building a society that, that shouts out his glory and reflects his goodness in everything we do. Uh, I think a little bit about what does that mean in the context of these events that we just saw happen last night. And I don't really know. But I do know that like a farmer would understand this world that we've been we've been living in and that there's the society that we're shaping and crafting it needs to reflect god but also god is in control no matter what happens god god is the owner and god is the creator and god is is sovereign over this world and we can rest in in the peace knowing that that this is god's land and he's there with us every step of the way another thing that i've learned is we can't separate out care for creation from care for people. Environmental restoration is one of the most effective ways of helping the poor people around the world. And, and I think one of the things that I want to leave you guys with is we're in this moment where we have a huge opportunity. It's kind of a critical moment where we're going to choose to either understand how God created the world and step up and make it more beautiful and preserve and protect for the least of these around the world, people like Monica and Kamino, or we're not. We're going we're gonna to operate everything for our own selfish benefit. And I just want to leave you today with a key takeaway of live life with humility. Understand that this is God's world. This is God's creation. 
Um, and we're just playing a role, but our role is really important. So live your life understanding that mix of dependency on God and the need to step up and take action as a farming family would on a daily basis. I'm um, gonna understand that, that God's in control. Uh, and every year you're gonna do your little bit and your little bit and God will take that all and turn it into something beautiful. So thank you. I met Christy just over a year ago and was so deeply um, impressed in that moment and certainly here today with not only your wisdom, but the passion with which you carry that. So would you join me in thanking her for sharing with us this morning? Again, we invite you to participate in the rest of the events of um, Creation Care Week, holding that tension um, that there's a lot we don't know, but we do know that God is in control. On Wednesday night this week in Time Out, we get to hear from three students who are sharing a combination of their wisdom and their passion about care for the earth. So we invite you to join us there. You're dismissed. If any of you want to linger today and be in prayer, uh, if you need prayer. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome to come and, and spend some time and uh, look for some people to pray with you.